If you've got one of these with one of those, then you need to be watching this episode because if your car will start in park, in reverse, in neutral, in drive, in two, in one, you've got a problem and guess what? Auto Crafters has got a solution after the break. Restoration of a classic Ford is a journey of discovery. Let Auto Crafters help you with yours. We offer quality parts for Falcon, Fairlane, F-Series, Galaxy, Maverick, and Pinto. Contact us today. All right, so what I have here on the table is the neutral safety switch for column shift 1966 to 1971 on Fairlane Torino. This will also work for other applications that use this style of a uh, neutral safety switch, and you may go, where the Sam Hill is it? It's not where you might think. A lot of the transmissions will have a neutral safety switch on them. On the fair lanes, they didn't do that because the tunnel size, I think, was a little too small. They actually put it on the column, and I'll show you in just a minute how to install this, but this is the new part. These have only been available as new old stock items for quite a little while, and it comes complete with everything you need. You get a set of instructions that are the original Ford Motorcraft instructions. You get the neutral safety switch and the clip pin. Now this pin can sometimes be missing. So the nice thing is, is this is now included with the new neutral safety switch. And these things can be problematic. If you're having a starting problem in the car, sometimes it's the neutral safety switch causing the issue. They can get gummed up inside and they can fall apart inside. Some people just take them out because they don't really understand what the function of them is. This literally keeps you from running over your friends. <laughs> and I have a graphic example of how that happens. Cam and I were working on the 69 Fairlane Wagon who incidentally has a malfunctioning neutral safety switch, mostly because it's unplugged. And I got in the car while we were doing testing for the 4R70W and went to start the car and didn't realize that in getting in the car, I had knocked it from neutral down into drive. Cam was in front of the car. When I went to start it, the car lurched forward. You really don't want that to happen, trust me. You don't want to kill a friend because you don't have this part in the car. These are very important to keep things doing what they're supposed to be doing. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull an original neutral safety switch in to compare it to the original for pigtail length and all that kind of stuff so you guys can be assured that that's pretty much copacetic. All right, so here is an original neutral safety switch. This one is Ford part numbered. So this is a, an Autolite version too. So this is actually an early one, probably for 69 Fairlane. I believe this one came out of the wagon that we we're working on and was experiencing some kind of issues. I mean, gosh knows as dusty and dirty as this thing is, it could have been having a problem with, with contacting across poles here. I'm not gonna go into what the wires do. Basically, they go out to the ignition switch and if the thing is not in the right position, it won't start and that's done with contacts inside of here that sweep back and forth. These contact points can go bad on you and there's really not a decent way to get these things apart and make it where you can go in and repair it. I mean, I'm pretty sure you can take this thing down go in there and muck around with the contact points, but I'd rather just go ahead and put a new one on it. Incidentally, looking at the new one compared to this one, the biggest difference I see is that the wire leads may be just a tad shorter. In our 69 Fairlane wagon, I've hooked, the, hooked one of the new ones up, didn't have a problem with it. There's more than enough lead coming off the chassis harness to go to this, so I'm not that worried about that portion of it. The thing they did different is this looks almost like a turn signal harness uh, wire color. What they should have done if you were trying to go full concourse correct would be to go in and make these two center ones black, the outside one red with blue, this one red with blue to be, you know, correct. I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to run cam over. I'm happy. He'll be happy because we won't be having problems with it, not with it just starting anywhere on the shifter. So it looks really good. Everything sits up copacetically. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to pull the column in here and I'm going to install this so that you can see how it goes in. Because where it's at underneath the dash of the car, there's no way you could see it if I installed it on the car. All right, so I pulled the column in here. Now this is just a column that I got in the stash of loot when I bought the car from my friend Steve Raby. Um, so I assembled this from the existing column that he had in some of that loot. And I pulled some other parts that he had as well because the one that I have is already in the car. This is a spare that I had. 
It's an early version of the Switch that had a little bit of an issue. They fixed the problem, which is kind of cool. We were actually a beta tester for this Switch for uh, AutoCrafters. So they got the problems worked out and now this Switch works great. But this is the one I'm going to use for installation on here. Obviously, we're <clears throat> not going to start the car with this. Now, some housekeeping things. If yours is missing all of the attaching hardware and everything on here, you got a problem, friend, because these little suckers right here are extremely short little screws. Uh, they're a self-tapping bolt, and right now I don't know if like AMK or anybody carries anything that's this size, but if you look at that, that is a very, very short little bolt. And it's because you're going into this and the assembly in here moves back and forth with the actuation of the arm up on this end of it. When you pull the arm into park, this moves to a position, which is what I'm going to talk about next. If any of the attaching parts from here on down to the shift portion on the transmission are super sloppy or are causing you a problem because maybe this grommet here is missing or you've got a misalignment situation that's causing you an issue for it to be in park or stay in park, any of these pieces that go on down to the transmission itself are jacked up. What we're doing here won't make any difference. So you need to make sure that everything beyond the neutral safety switch out is in good condition. If it's not, you're going to have to try to figure out a way to source these grommets, which they are available, uh, to fix your problems on here. The only thing I will say is on the Fairlane uh, column shifts, it's set in metal. And so sometimes those can get a little loose on the actual pivot point that bolts to the inner frame rail. I'm not even going to try to get a picture of that for you because it's actually underneath the steering box. Really hard to see, even harder to remove. But all that aside, I'm going to show you how this thing bolts up. Now, I only have one of these little screws with me right now because I'm not robbing one off of mine because it starts perfectly. Well, it, it might. The battery's probably dead, but be that as it may. All right, now, the first thing I'm going to do to install this is to put the clip piece that goes to move the neutral safety switch in right here. Uh, and that is probably going to be the hardest thing you do, especially with the new one from Auto Crafters. What you'll want to do is you want to get a pair of needle nose pliers and go up high, like right here, where they're almost completely pinched down and throw this thing in here. Now what I will say about that is this. It should be nice and tight like this one is, but the problem is I don't know how you're going to get the needle nose pliers in here if this column is in the car. The original one that's in our 69 Fairlane, I reused it because this one was really tough to get in place. Uh, with your fingers. It's, you can do it, but you're going to have to get on this side of it, put pressure on the top and try to drive a screwdriver in there. And I'm showing you a little bit of video of the underdash area on our 69 Fairlane. And you can see there, there is just no room in there. So that's going to be an issue for you when you're doing the install on this in the car. If you're doing it like Ford did, most likely they set this thing on here with the column out of the car before they put the column in. And then they adjusted it once they got it in the car because then they could do a test to make sure it was in the right place. All right, now the next thing you want to do is you want to make sure that the car is in neutral whenever you're putting the switch on. That's very important because that's what the instructions outline for you to do. So make sure that the shifter position is in neutral, the transmission is in neutral when you're putting this thing together. And you'll stick it on with the tabs pointing toward the back. You want to hear it click onto the... Uh, the tab that goes on to the column. And then you'll take a 5 16 nut driver or a wrench and do your set screw. You will probably have to do some adjustments to this after you get everything done. When you've got this in position, you make sure that it's in neutral. Then you can pull this pin out and now that part of it is set. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is once you put it in park, uh, these two pins stabilize the position for park on the uh, neutral safety switch. And these two pins need to be removed after everything is done. That bottom one can be somewhat of a pain to get out because of its position next to this uh, here. Throw the pins away, you don't need them anymore, and that is then your neutral safety switch installed. Now I will tell you, 
that on our 69 Fairlane, we had to move it around just a little bit in order to get the neutral safety switch in the position where it would start in both neutral and in park. If you don't have to do that, you're lucky. That, that's not going to happen probably though. Just going to let you know. Because most of the time in a case like this, it's going to need a little bit of motion to figure out where the correct position is for neutral and for park. And that's how easy this is on a tabletop. It's not, it's not that easy when you do it in the car. Because when you're on your back trying to do this underneath the dash, looking up, trying to put little bitty screws in the side of a round column and keep the neutral safety switch where it's supposed to be, you're going to have some choice words. Just let me warn you of that right now. Speaking of warning you of something, why don't you join us on our Patreon account? Uh, at the $10 a month level, you get monthly meetings with me with a bunch of other people on Zoom. It's a great time. Everybody really enjoys it. We do tech Q&A where we help you solve your technical problems if we at all possibly can. All the people will pile in on this stuff too. We've got a lot of sharp cookies that join us on Patreon, so please be a part of that. The guys you see coming up to me next over here or over here, it's going to be on one of these two sides. These guys are the ones that put their money where their mouth is and are our supporters. Thank you, Patrick Lee. You're our top supporter right now. All the guys listed below you are still doing a great job helping us out with that. We do monthly tech for you guys that are on the Patreon account. It doesn't affect anything we do on Auto Restaurant or here at Manic Mechanic. So just realize that they get tech that you don't only because they're <laughs> putting money in on it. And this money is helping to go pay Andrew, our, one of our guys. We've pulled him in as a a part-time guy for right now. We're wanting to get into a full-time position here. So you are helping someone learn the craft of being a film guy or gal. Because it might not always be Andrew. You never know. But anyway, subscribe to the channel also. Right now, we don't know what the Sam Hill's going on with subscriptions. YouTube has done away supposedly with the email portion of that. But some guys are still getting their emails. <laughs> So we don't know what's going on there, but they say that that's going away and has possibly already gone away completely. If you look for us in your email box, you're not going to find us. The best thing to do is this. You know that we put videos up on Sundays and Thursdays, and we have some stuff that falls in the middle on there. We'll try to put out information on that for you guys when we're going to be doing something special. We'll put something on the comments or whatever the thing is on YouTube, and you might see that and you might not. But we're also gonna do a video on subscriptions on where to find the information because quite frankly, it, it took Andrew and I a couple of days to figure out where it was that you can see that you have a subscription set up and where those listings are for that. So we're gonna show you what that is because if I'm having trouble finding it, I gotta believe a couple of you guys probably are too. Mostly it's gonna be us guys with the slightly grayish white hair, sorry. I know we're supposed to be really computer savvy, but sometimes we're not. That's how it is. And that's our show for this week, folks. So do me a favor. Love on each other. Like each other. Treat each other nice. You guys come back next week, and we'll see you on down the road. So Andrew said I wasn't supposed to talk about his drinking problem. He really doesn't have a drinking problem. I just like picking on him about it because it bothers him. You know how it is, guys. If, if you have a friend and you know something bothers them, like if you nickname them Booger, and they really get pissed off about it because they're your friend, what are you gonna do? You're gonna keep calling them Booger. Why? Because he's your friend and it pisses him off. Does this make sense to women? No. Because if you called a girl friend and you were a girl, Booger, she's gonna be mad at you forever. She'll probably never talk to you again. A guy calls another guy Booger, after a while, what does he start doing? He starts answering to Booger. Witness, what was it, Better Off Dead? The John Hughes movie? Where the character's nickname was Booger and the guys called him Booger and he didn't care? I'm rambling. You guys have a great week. <laughs>